Welcome to today's chapter. It's called Title Records. Um, it's kind of the second part of title. And today we're going to be further talking about the title records, where they're recorded, how they get recorded, when they get recorded, and why they get recorded. So you ready? Let's get started. All right, so title records are records that are entered into the public record and they give what is called constructive notice of written documents. And there are many different places that these title records get maintained. They are at the recorder's office, the clerk's office, county treasurers for taxes, there's collectors, there's the courts. So all of these different places are where records get recorded and we're going to talk a little bit about the recording of the deeds. <clears throat> now, before we get started, I'm gonna play a little game here and I want you to answer at home. So here we go. So I've got a property and I own the property. And a couple days ago, I went and I quit claimed the property to John and he accepted the quick claim that deed was delivered and accepted. Then yesterday, I forgot, and I quit claimed the property again to Susan, who went down and recorded the quit claim at the recorder's office. So the question I have is who owns the property? David? or Susan, hit the pause button and think about it a minute and come right back. Okay, so we're back. If you picked David, raise your hand. If you pick Susan, raise your hand. Well, the answer is David, all right? Recording a deed has nothing to do with the legality of ownership. Very importantly, understand that, all right? Recording has nothing to do with making the transfer legal, all right? And if you don't believe me, let me give you a couple of uh, other hypothetical questions to think about. <clears throat> so if you think recording makes it legal, let me ask you a question. What year did the recorder's office open? Pick a date. I don't care, pick any date you want. Let's say the recorder's office started in 1901. So what you're telling me then is we didn't transfer property legally before the recorder's office? No, we did, all right? Because recording doesn't make it legal, all right? Uh, second question, if I quit claim the property to David three days ago, how do I actually own it to quit claim it to Susan today. That's why I put forgot in finger parentheses because that would border on fraud because it's not my property anymore. So recording has nothing to do with the legality of ownership. So let me ask you a question here. Here's a, another question. Where do you think I live at? I'm gonna let you think a minute and see if you can figure out the address in which I live. All right. So now let me ask David. David's a class member here. So David, where do I live? You live at 330 Locust Lane in Nashville, Indiana, 47448. And David, how do you know that? You told me before class started. Right. I actually told David before class what my address was. You guys looked at the screen where a student would look to gain information about a topic you want to learn. You have what is called constructive notice. David had actual notice because I told him you just looked at the screen and assumed that's where it was because that's where a smart person would look. 
That is what we are talking about. We are talking about constructive notice, which is the legal presumption that the information available it can be obtained through due diligence. This could include property ownership. However, it doesn't mean it's necessarily correct. As opposed to actual notice, sometimes called actual knowledge, because that person, like David, had direct knowledge because I literally told him that I lived there. All right? So understand that constructive notice is not always true. Here's another way to look at it. When the property closes, and I told you that there's a boop, and the property transfers, and that buyer walks out of the closing with the actual ownership, the recorder's office still has the seller on title down there because there hasn't been a recording yet. Do you think the seller still owns it? No, because they just conveyed it boop, through the delivery and the acceptance. There takes some physical time to actually record it. I mean, you close at three o'clock on a Monday, you own the property, even though the records downtown still say the seller's name because the title company hasn't gotten down to the recorder's office to actually have it physically recorded, all right? There actually are people that sit down at the state and literally take a document and they click, chunk, and they uh, stamp it with a time. That process in Marion County, Indiana, can take four to six weeks. Some counties take longer. Think about Miami. How many transfers and conveyances are? Do you think they get them all in one day? No, there's a backlog. And then other counties like mine, Nashville, where it's Brown County, it may take a day or two because there's not as many. So constructive notice may not always be correct. Another example of constructive notice is virtually every social media platform is constructive notice. I've got a friend of mine that I've not seen in five years, but I know he got ice cream last night because he posted it on Facebook. Does it mean it's true? Not necessarily. We've all seen those pictures before where you see people going, oh, uh, and, you know, in their hand. My girlfriend's trying to take a selfie. And then you see the reflection in the mirror of it's that person taking their own selfie because that post is not true. <laughs> all right. That is what we call constructive notice. All right. So I'm back. Sorry. We were on recording. Recording is the actual physical act of placing documents in the public record, all right? So documents get recorded in many different places. We are going to mainly deal with the recording of the deed, all right? So the deed gets recorded in the county where the real estate is located. So if it's recorded in Brown County, it gets recorded in Brown County. And you can play that game as much as you want. When they record it, they actually record it by date. So let's go over here and play with this for a second here. Let's get rid of this. We don't need that. So when they record something, they record under, if you're a bartender, you understand this is called the first in, first out method. So let's play an example. <clears throat> let's say I borrow 100000 from Fifth Third Bank and I to buy a house and it gets recorded in the year January the 1st of 2000. That would be what is called the first lien position, all right? Because it was recorded first. Now remember, all the stuff that was on there previous with the old homeowner got removed because of the general warranty deed said he would pay off his taxes, he would pay off his mortgage. So for that brief second, that house is free and clear, and then they record the note and the IOU, which says, I borrowed, let's just make sure it's clear. 
$100,000 and fifth third is who I borrowed the money from and it got recorded first. That is the first lien position. Currently, what you see on the screen, there's only one. Now, let's divert just to make sure we understand. So in a typical sale, here's what would happen. Let's say I now sell the house today for 150. Who gets the first money? Well, the first money goes there to clear my lien like I promised in the general warranty deed and I keep the 50,000. That is how the typical sale works. And then whoever I sold it to, they get a clean slate and their loan records and becomes the first lien just like mine was. All right. So now let's back up and look at something else. Now, we know the house is worth 150. I had it appraised. So I want to get a... Uh, Home equity line of credit. Now, you don't know what that is yet, but trust me, it's there. So it, I get it, and I'm going to get it recorded for 25000 Let me make sure you can read that. From Nat City, and it got recorded in the year 2022. Now, it is the second one in. Why is it second? because it gets recorded by date. And that date is after the first one. Now that is called a second lien, or sometimes you hear it called a junior lien. So I now have two liens on my property. I've got the first lien of a mortgage for 100. I've got a second lien of a home equity line of credit for 25,000. Now let's play the game. I sell it for 150. The first 100 goes here. The second 25 goes there. And I keep the 25. That is how a sale would work. So liens get recorded by date. And then they get paid off by their priority. First lien gets first money. Second lien gets second money. All right. So that's how this process gets worked. Now, in that priority, it is established, like I told you, by the date that got recorded here. And when I go to pay it off, I pay the first lien. All right? So that's how they get recorded. Now, some documents are actually so important that they don't get recorded. Uh, I'm sorry, what did you say? Yes, some documents are so important, we don't need to record them down at the recorder's office because they may be recorded somewhere else. A good example would be like a tax lien. Everybody has taxes in the state of Indiana. Everybody has taxes in the state of Florida and Virginia and New Mexico. So why do we need to record it? Because we know everybody has it. So when that title searcher goes down and searches the public records, they will stop at the assessor's office and get those tax liens. Other liens, like inheritance liens. Court documents may also not get recorded at the recorder's office because they're held by the clerk of the court when they do a, a background search on the buyer or the seller. And what you will eventually see is this thing called a chain of title. So let's clear this out. A chain of title is nothing more than the pedigree of the property that says, okay, Raymond owns the property now. He bought it from this person who bought it from this person who bought it from this person who bought it from the builder. This is a chain of title, all right? Now, I don't know if that's really a good idea. Well, maybe let's try and make it a little more clear. Let's see if we can do it this way.
All right. So the chain of title is nothing more than the pedigree of owners back through the history. In that chain of title, it does not show all the encumbrances and liens. Those are actually recorded at the recorder's office. All right. This chain that I have drawn here is what everybody wants. This is called an unbroken chain because as you can see, maybe you can see that. That's an unbroken chain. It transferred from owner to owner with a general warranty deed, a general warranty deed, a general warranty deed. And now I own the property. All right. That is an unbroken chain.